Okay, let's start. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Qatar Open Innovation Program webinar. This webinar is in partnership with um, um, between QRDI Council and uh, Gulf Warehousing Company, GWC. I'm very excited to be your host today for this session. Let me introduce myself. My name is Abdul Haq Al Eidi, and I'm a program manager in QRDI uh, in charge of the Qatar Open Innovation Program. My distinguished guest uh, and panelist today are Mr. Hamdan Merchant and Mr. Pramod Shetty from GWC. So um, let me first um, introduce you the two panelists. Mr. Uh, Hamdan Merchant is currently working in GWC as Senior Director Innovation IT and Operational Excellence. GWC is the leading provider of logistics and supply chain solutions in the state of Qatar. During his uh, tenure in uh, GWC of, for, over the, for over eight years, Mr. Merchant has worked to embed a culture of continuous improvement throughout the company, emphasizing the values of lean Kazen with the aim of empowering employees and facilitating their work through improved processes, thereby adding values to the services provided to clients. He has over 17 years of experience working in various industries such as retail, manufacturing, distribution and warehousing across the world. He earned his MBA from uh, Emory University Boizoita Business School in Atlanta, along with a master's degree in supply chain management from Syracuse uh, University, New York. And he is, and is certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt, Lean Sensei, and Innovation 360 Licensed Practitioner. My second guest is uh, Mr. Pramod Shetty. He is a trailblazing, a persuasive, and competent individual with over 16 years of captivating experience in business solutions, consulting strategy, devo strategy development, business um, development, and operation operations optimization across business growth and solutions, consulting across warehousing, supply chain, automation, and distribution to optimize operational efficiencies, enhance customer satisfaction, drive business growth through innovation and strategic solutions. Lean Sigma innovate, Innovation IMBB and Agile Certified Supply Chain Consultant a TEDx speaker and an author of self-published book. Now we come to the agenda of today's webinar. So we'll start by introducing, introducing the Qatar Open Innovation Program. Um, then uh, I will hand over to uh, Mr. Merchant to um, talk about GWC and the uh, Open Innovation Call. Then we, I will show how to submit a proposal and we come to the Q&A session and at the end we will end the webinar. So uh, let me first say some words about QRDI, which is Qatar Research Development and Innovation Council. It was established in 2018, representing a new milestone in Qatar's research development and innovation agenda. The council's first mission was to develop a nation strategy, national strategy that would optimize RDI activities and help realize the country overreaching goals and ambitions. The council accomplished this mission at the end of 2019, having drafted the Qatar Research Development and Innovation Strategy 2030. The council brings together prominent national and international figures from across government, industry, and academia, and draws the wealth of knowledge and expertise of individuals from various disciplines. Now I'm going to talk about the Qatar Open Innovation Program, which is the first program launched by uh, QRDI. So Qatar Open Innovation uh, Program 
aims at, at connecting opportunity owner who are in this case large local enterprises like GWC, like um, Kahrama, Qatar Airways, uh, um, and so on, and um, and government entities like ministries and agencies with local and international innovator. This is the aim of the uh, project. What's the aim is to allow the um, uh, innovators to pilot innovation products and solution in Qatar. So in the frame of the program, what we do is to work with lar large local enterprises and government agencies to identify areas where they want to pilot innovation in order to enhance their performance or competitiveness. After identifying the opportunity, we structure uh, it in a form of call for proposal, and then we reach out to uh, innovators, to you innovators, through our partners, uh, Nine Sigma, all by ourselves. And the idea, as I said, is to pilot um, innovation, uh, innovative pro your innovative products uh, and solutions in Qatar. So what's, what's uh, our offer to you in the frame of this program? Uh, so first you will gain access to funding for pilot developments. Second is to have potential commercial agreements with the large local enterprise and government agencies in Qatar. Third offer is to facilitate company registration inside process inside Qatar, then to gain access to local incubators and accelerators and to gain access to Qatar and GCC markets. I'm going here to give some examples of the large local enterprises or the open um, that we work with them. We published them already. Here are some uh, companies and ministries. And the example of today is GWC. So we have, uh, as I mentioned before, Kahrama, Assad, Milaha, Uridu, Sidra, Isresa, GWC, Baladna, Aspire, and two ministries, the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change and the Ministry of uh, Municipality. So, so far we published 21 open innovation call. We awarded uh, eight and the rest are either under evaluation or live. Uh, an example of the live proposals is the GWC. And I will hand over right now to Mr. Merchant to talk about GWC and um, the challenge um, they want to uh, find a solution with you or to partner with you. Hamdan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. Can you confirm before I start that you can hear me, Abdullah? Get my voice audible? Yeah, yes. Right. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdullah. And thank you, everyone, uh, for joining in. Really appreciate it. Uh, how I've structured the presentation is I'll spend uh, around five minutes giving a background about GWC, five to seven minutes background about GWC, the services we offer and where we come from. And then, then, then next is where I'll dive into the specific the challenge that we have here, the innovation challenge, and then talk more about it, and then take it from there. If you could go to the next slide, please, Dr. Miller. Yeah, so this slide gives uh, one slide view of the complete organization. So we are a primary Qatari company uh, started in 2004. So we are a 19 year old company. Uh, we are listed in Qatar Stock Exchange. We are publicly listed in Qatar Stock Exchange. And we are the leading, as uh, Dr. Abdullah said, we are leading logistics provider in the state of Qatar. And we are a regional player as well. We have uh, more than around 4,000 people in our organization. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, we have 4 million square meters of uh, warehousing logistic infrastructure in Qatar. Uh, we handle more than 2 million freight tons uh, annually. We have 1,600 vehicles on the road in Qatar. And we store documents as well, which I'll come later. We store more than 2.5 billion documents currently stored in Qatar. Uh, we have, we were the official logistics provider for the FIFA World Cup that just ended as well. So we did the complete logistics uh, for the FIFA and we were one of the sponsors for the World Cup as well. 
in addition to Qatar, we have offices in UAE, Bahrain, uh, Oman, Saudi Arabia, as well as we have presence in Netherlands too uh, for, for our freight forwarding industry. Uh, our story, as you can see, we are a growth company. You know, if you look at how we started off earlier, um, where we were when in 2010, if you look at, you know, our, our revenue was 88 million. And if you see the growth, the curve, how it's moved on in 2018, we crossed a billion, uh, a billion reals. This is in Qatari reals. And now we, 2022, when we closed the books, we were at 1.5 billion reals. Uh, in terms of people as well, we started with a small team of 30 and now we have reached 4,000 as well. Uh, there were different milestones along that helped us to move forward where we were the, always the innovation, uh, we always innovated in the market and that helped us to grow. So what this slide, what I wanted to bring across here is that we are a, a growth company. We have a very uh, good success story that from 20 million to 1.5 billion in uh, less than 20 years. Um, and primarily this has happened because we constantly look to innovate. We like to be the pioneers uh, in, in, in this logistics industry. Our vision is to set standards. As you can see there, we continue to set standards and strive to be the market leader for integrated supply chain solution in the region. So we basically uh, offer end-to-end -end supply chain, right from the first mile uh, where you pick up a product anywhere in the world to the last mile delivery where the end consumer uh, wherever they place, they get the product. So we do complete end-to-end -end and all the logistics uh, services in between. The next couple of slides, you will see uh, more about uh, specific business units uh, that we do. I'll touch base really quickly on that. If we could go to the next slide. So as I said, we have uh, 4 million square meters of logistics parks. So these are strategically placed logistics park across across Qatar. These are all four that you see here are, uh, are placed in Qatar, uh, which ranges from half a million square meters to 1.5 million square meters, which is the biggest in the region. Okay. Um, these warehousing parks have warehouses of different sizes and different heights. Uh, they could be anywhere from uh, 500 square meters to as big as uh, 35,000 square meters of, of warehouse sheds as well. Uh, they are a mixture of where we operate as a 3PL provider, and there are some warehouses where we do pure real estate as well, where we lease out warehouses to different companies and different organizations where they do their own operations. As well. uh, so, so that's the space that we have only uh, exclusively in Qatar. If we go to the next slide, and all the pictures you guys see here are real pictures. They're not rendered pictures in all of these slides that you see with GWC. They're actual pictures of our facility. So you get an idea as well uh, you know, how a facility looks like. So in addition to 4 million square meters that we just spoke about, uh, we have industry-specific hubs as well. So we have 400,000 million, 400, square meters in Ras Lafan, which is primarily for oil and gas sector. That's placed in Ras Lafan. And another 65,000 square meters in Messahin Industry City, which is uh, specific for chemicals and hazmat uh, warehouses. So these are specifically stored in different uh, locations, uh, catering to a specific business units as well. Next slide, please. So as I said, we offer in you know, a complete end-to-end -end supply chain solution, integrated supply chain solution, right from uh, contract logistics, forwarding, GWC records, which may which involves a storage of documents, uh, events such as uh, FIFA, um, and now there's Nation Football Cup coming in. Uh, we did a Formula F1 as well. Uh, GWC Fine Art, uh, Equestrian, which is the horses uh, out for the country as well. Marine, we have a marine division where we are agents for different ship, shipping liners. Energy, which is a new, new division for us that's primarily supporting oil and gas as well. And UPS as well. UPS is a courier company. So in Qatar, we represent UPS. We are a contractor for UPS. And all of this sits under uh, GWC Consulting, which is another division that I have, which uh, basically um, ensures that we are efficient within the organization, as well as we provide consulting services to external clients as well uh, to, to optimize their products, optimize their services. If you could go next slide, please. 
uh, again, uh, this touching base, uh, you know, the contract logistics, which is the primary focus for this innovation call. So uh, in contract logistics, we have, uh, as, it, as, as states here, we're a market leader in warehousing distribution here. Uh, we provide different types of contract logistics. We offer 3PL, uh, third party logistics. We offer 4PL, four party logistics, uh, as well as we do 2PL as well. Uh, in terms of uh, pilot locations for 3PL, we have 500,000 pilot locations uh, purely for 3PL. Uh, inventory accuracy, um, and that will come into the picture as we talk later. So currently we are at 99.99%, which is very important for us, and we are very proud about it because that's what differentiates us, and we attribute this accuracy to uh, processes, uh, our systems, and our people, and the training that we have. In terms of um, storage condition, we offer all kinds of storage. We have been you know, right from negative 20 degrees Celsius to plus 25 degrees Celsius. So we do frozen, we do chill, we do AC and, amb and ambient as well. Uh, so can we offer end-to-end -end, uh, supply chain solution. And we have host of different certification. Too. The remaining is we also have the hazmat divisions, uh, specifically the hazmat for pharma, Division, we are the only pharma authorized uh, warehouse in Qatar, where we do uh, all the leading pharma uh, logistics is handled by us as well. We have a distribution uh, division and a consulting division. Go next slide, please. Forwarding uh, is where we, you know, freight forwarding division is where we bring freight from anywhere across the world to Qatar or from Qatar to anywhere across the world. Uh, transport, as I said, we have 1,600 vehicles with different sizes that uh, catering to different needs of the, uh, of, of the organizations here. Projects, these are specific uh, complex projects, like right now we have the NFE project, North Field Expansion for Oil and Gas, so this team is specifically focused on that. And records is basically your documents for healthcare, for educational, for banking that we store here. We pretty much have 90% of the market here. Uh, and as, as I said, we have 2.5 billion documents stored out here, but physically as well as digitally uh, as well that we do this. Let's go next slide. Uh, continuing this, all of this uh, success, we pride us in that we have a strong digital strategy uh, to ensure that we stay on the top and that differentiates us from our uh, competitors. Uh, we have we focus on innovation, but it's mainly focused on automation, data analytics, mobile technology, and cloud computing. So those are a backbone of our, our organization as well, a digital strategy. Can you go next slide? As I said, uh, we are the authorized service contractor for UPS in Qatar. We have 25 vehicles of uh, UPS vehicles, only for 20, only for UPS, uh, and all the courier for UPS is handled by us. So next slide. Uh, for FIFA, which is a very proud moment for us and, and in the country, we were the official uh, logistics provider for FIFA 2022, where we, uh, it was a different logistical challenge and we were very proud that we came across uh, successfully, we delivered uh, the scope. In terms of, just to give you an idea of the breadth of the scope that we managed to deliver ourselves, was we delivered more than 15 million can of beverages, uh, 3.8 million linens for the hospitality, 1.8 million pieces of equipment, 200,000 pieces of media equipments, another 200,000 hospitality and match tickets, and 193,000 fixtures. All this was done in space of four months. So we, you could understand the intense uh, your operation, intensity of the operation at that time. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, and uh, again, to make sure that we are doing everything correct, we are compliant to various different standards, different ISO certifications, and so on. Next slide. All right, now we come down to the specific problem statement of why we are here. Um, so again, as you saw in those slides, at currently the inventory uh, accuracy is 99.99%. Uh, how is this? achieved is because we do multiple cycle counts throughout the year to, uh, in, in all our warehouses. We have a team that's dedicated to just counting the inventory. 
uh, we do anywhere from you know an A class I we different segregate item A, B, and C. So A class item we do anywhere from three times a year, world to world. B we do two times a year, and C class is one time a year. This A, B, C is uh, segregated by price value as well as by the frequency of movement. If an item is moving more often, there's more likely that there could be an error. So we do more cycle count for that too. For this is done, as I said, it is done uh, by a team uh, manually. So they have, they, have a, they have a schedule, weekly, monthly basis that they go across our, our different racks in the warehouses and, and they do this. This is where we would like to automate because they are purely just going and counting the boxes uh, or the pieces or the pallets if they are there. So this is where we like to aut automate either using a drone or sensors, any other technology that we can think of, how we can automate the cycle count compare this to the WMS and then highlight the mismatches. Those are the mismatches where I want, are the only one where I want the people to go and check. If everything matches correctly, we can be good to go. That's the part I want to automate. Um, currently we have 15 manpower, more than 15 people, FTEs, who are doing this activity on a daily basis to get this, uh, get this accuracy. And these pallets are placed as high as 12 meter. Uh, and they could be either a full pallet or they could be a half pallet with shrink wrap around it. So they could be a pallet with, you know, full, fully nicely cube of say 20, 25 boxes, or they could be something that's picked partially from it. So we could have 10 boxes in a pallet too. It could be a, a pallet that is not fully cube, just half cube. Uh, temperature ranges could be as in minus 15 to plus 25 degree uh, Celsius. Can you go next slide. What would be a good outcome for us? Um, you know, we're obviously looking at uh, reduction, increased productivity, which will help us to reduce cost. And in terms of accuracy, we want to make sure we stay the same, 99.99% or better, but we don't want to compromise on accuracy just for the cost of productivity, because we, that's, that's an important aspect for us. Uh, what are the technical challenges that I face or a gap to stop in the move forward? So we've been looking at it in the market for a few years now. I've, we found quite a few drones that can count. But what drones can do is they can only tell me if there's a pallet in the, in the location. So they can give me full pallets uh, if a pallet is in there or it's not in there matches. That's in that's in the market for a few years now. Um, again, not, not everyone can do in the temperature range, so that's another challenge. But the biggest challenge is to count the number of boxes in the pallet. I mean, uh, that's where we haven't seen anything in the market yet where any technology can go and sense and see, okay, what is this cube or how many boxes are in that pallet? And we want to compare that to the system. That's the challenge that we have come across, uh, that we are not able to solve that. Uh, the other important aspect that I did not mention is most of our warehouses or most of our racks are, are VNAIs, which means it's a very narrow aisle uh, width. So they range around one, they range at 1.8 meter, the aisle width. So that's the narrow aisle that we work uh, for, most of the, for most of the racks. We go next uh, slide. What's in scope or out of scope? May I, anything, any solution that can solve the challenges within the scope. So I don't have anything that's specifically out of scope for me. Uh, so that's a brief about our challenge here. Um, I think our next slide is, uh, Dr. Abdul Hak, back to you. Yeah, again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if there are any Q and A's, I'll be happy to answer or give, uh, give you more insights on it as we move forward. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mershon, for uh, your uh, comprehensive presentation. Um, so let me now explain how to submit a proposal. But before that, I would like to remind you to send your um, uh, questions through the uh, Q&A uh, function uh, so that we can answer them at the end of this uh, presentation. So um, how to uh, submit a proposal, You, most of you, all of you know uh, our website, uh, KRDI website, where the uh, challenge is, uh, is posted. So you can go on this challenge, you scroll down, you will find the, the uh, tracking and tracing warehouse inventory from GWC. And then you just uh, click there you will find the full description of the of the call for proposal. You apply, you click by applying on this box where it's written apply here. And this box will take you, take you to the uh, Nine Sigma, um, our partners. 
uh, portal where if you know and you are already uh, registered there, then you will, um, you, you know uh, how to fill the forms. Otherwise, if uh, this is the first time that you see the portals, then you click on the uh, button respond. It will, sorry, it will take you to um, uh, a registration, I would say, uh, web page where you have to register if you, you didn't register. So if you didn't register once you register, it will take you back to the same um, page where it's written respond, where there is a respond button. And once you click inside, you will find the different fields where to uh, uh, fill in your, your application. That's all for the um, uh, how to submit a proposal. Here are uh, some advices. Please fill in all the fields. Don't leave uh, fields empty um, and tick only the relevant uh, boxes. If um, a, a box is not relevant to you, do not tick it, please. Now, if uh, you are not done, for example, you start to fill and you got something urgent, then you can just save. When you come back, you will find your application there. It's, it will not, uh, you, it will not uh, regenerate, uh, I would say from zero. And once you finish your application, you complete your application, please um, do not forget to uh, click on the button uh, submit. Otherwise your, your proposal will stay in the draft status and it will not come to us. Um, I just remind you about the uh, deadline to submit your proposal is August 23rd. Um, 2023. So uh, this is it for um, the uh, challenge and the Qatar Open Innovation Program. I would like now to receive to read your questions. And meanwhile, if you didn't uh, send your question, please um, send it. I start read the questions. Um, and uh, my colleagues, uh, my uh, partners, you know, uh, Handan and Pramod will will uh, answer the technical questions. Uh, first one is, what is the size range of typical boxes? Yeah, uh, so they could range anywhere from uh, 350 mm to say even a meter. So they could be anywhere in that range uh, as the length. Uh, with around the same 350 to 400 as well, and the height could be could be maximum uh, 400 meters millimeters as well. Next question: Do you have some sample photos of partially picked uh, pellets? We do, uh, but we could send them at a later stage after this call. But we do have we could share the photos uh, separately after this after this call. Um, okay, so right you can. Be, yeah. Sorry. So you, you, whoever asked this question, reaches reach us uh, out through the email qrdi.org.ca, and then we will send you the uh, photos. Um, next question: Can you please share what are number of pallets that the team of fifteen is counting on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis? Yeah, uh, estimated roughly, I would say uh, the team is counting close to 3,500 uh, locations, pallet locations, on a daily basis in total, give or take, but roughly that's the number. Okay. How many ABC SQs are there? Um, in total, I think we'd have close to a million SKUs uh, for ABCs uh, in together. But the breakdown would be A would probably be 20%, uh, B would be another 20, 15%, and remaining would be the C SKUs, uh, roughly. I'm just giving a top of hand. But in total, we'll have at least a million SKUs. Do we have the ability to fix a tag seeker um, to boxes in a, a partially picked pallet? Uh, yes, we could find a way to in, put this in a process. So when a picker picks a partially picked pallet, we could 
put in a process where they could stick, uh, put a tag or put a sticker to the statue. It would in increase in effort there, but if overall as a company we save, then yeah, we could look into that. So we are open to that. Okay. Um, how frequently do you envisage the cycle count to be done in a warehouse? Once every hour or once every shift? Currently, we have a schedule that has been, uh, uh, you know, as we said, we know the number of A item, B item, C item. We know the goal that A item has to be done three times a year, B twice, and C once wall to wall. Based on that, and the cycle count team has a schedule that on a, in a weekly basis, they need to cover X number of uh, cycle counts per warehouse, right? It is all divided. So they could do more on a particular day and less uh, on another day, but in a weekly, they need, in a week, they need to finish that goal. So this could vary. We cycle count is always secondary. The primary is to make sure the core operations are done. Cycle so count are normally done on a night basis uh, when when there's less operation, or on a day basis, uh, mid midday basis when the operations are lighter. This is current. In the future, um, we are open, right, uh, with the new process uh, that. It could be done once every shift, or however, we are open to that uh, solution there. As long as you meet the overall guideline. Thank you. Uh, question Will this webinar recording video sh uh, shared with us? Uh, this, this is a question to me, actually. So we have no uh, objective to share it. However, the question is the how. Uh, we will come back to you. So please reach us to us uh, through email, and then we will see with, with our logistics how to uh, share it with you. Um, next question. Are there any existing solutions from LEDD technologies will be um, need, will need to integrate with or with any other third party software? Uh, the only only integration I can envisage is the WMS, our, our existing WMS system, which is the in 4.11 uh, version. So that's the only one that I can envisage that the solution uh, should be integrated with it so that the count matches with the existing WMS and shows the mismatches. Uh, Dr. Blood, you missed one question by Claudio just before that. Did I? Just before the webinar. Okay, sorry. Uh, could you please elaborate more in what the video camera drone based solution failed? Sure, I want to talk about that. So uh, where the challenge is, a couple of them. One of them was uh, operating in the 1.8 meter aisle, but not many could do that uh, because it's such a narrow aisle and drone to be controlled in that, uh, that space. But we did find a couple of uh, vendors that could do, but there were not too many. And the second was, uh, as I said, a partially picked pallet. So if there, if, if if it's not a fully properly cubed pallet and it's only fifteen uh, boxes uh, instead of twenty boxes, uh, and maybe the first layer is visible, first layer is full, but the layer at the back is not fully picked, or so on. There, the camera couldn't uh, tell. The actual CBM or actual cube. If if a camera could read the CBM in there, then that would solve the problem because we have the CBM. CBM is a volume measurement of every product that is stored in our warehouse. But that's that's a TPL. That's how we build a custom. So every product we have a CBM. So if we can get the total CBM and match it with WMS, then we are good to go. So the camera couldn't uh, calculate the cube. With that. Thank you again for reminding me, remind me about this question. Are the warehouse open 24 7? Uh, yes, they open 24 7. Okay. Are the are products mixed on pallets? Rarely, but they are. Uh, they could, there are instances where we have mixed SKUs on, on a pallet too, but they are identified by different uh, barcode labels, uh, which is clearly visible on the front. Okay, is there any QR code for pallets and uh, separate QR code for boxes inside the pallet? If yes, are they mapped with the pallets? Uh, we have not a Q, we have uh, 2D barcodes uh, on the pallet and the boxes as well. And yes, they are mapped uh, with the pallet. We, we use something called the LPN, the license plate number, 
So every parrot has that information and they're mapped in there. Okay, next question. Is there any system in place to track the location of the pilots? Uh, the WMS system. So we know every pilot, uh, because if, we have, if we have 500,000 pilot positions, we need to know exactly where the pilots are. So everything is on a WMS, which is which is which people offer with a handheld mobile device. Uh, so any movement we scan in and, and put in a new location. It's done by manually by people, but it is tracked. Thank you. Next question: What is the version of the Info uh, WMS? It's Info version eleven. Good. Uh, thank you. Next question, would you please show the email? Okay, this is to me. I will show the email at the end of this, uh, this presentation. The email to which we must send the request. Okay, I will show you after this, uh, after the Q&A session. Uh, what is the space available between rows with the pallets and uh, above them? Sure, the rows between pallets is 1.8 meter, I admit, as I said, right? So between the two rows of pallets, there's a space of 1.8 meter for the foremost of a warehouse. We have wide aisle as well, but that's a small portion with it's up to three and a half meters. Uh, above them, I think, uh, promote, you wanna add? I think it's not much, but what is the number? Yeah, it will be hardly another uh, around 400 to 500 mm, like a half a meter. Again, we. Yeah. It depends on how much we are going to fill. So if the pallet size is one into 1.2 times the height, we keep up generally 1.2 uh, 1.2 to 1.4. Again, depends on how we are going to uh, make one cube. Yeah. Thank you, Pramod. Uh, next uh, question, is there LAN or VLAN um, network infrastructure available so we can hook up other wireless equipment with full coverage in the warehouse? Uh, yes, they are available. Thank you. Next question, is there any QR code, barcode on the 3,500 storage locations? Uh, yes, so we have a barcode on the locations, not QR code, we are right now barcode on the locations, as I said, barcode on the each pallet as well as uh, if boxes as well, uh, there's a bar. Okay, thank you. Next question is already uh, answered about the connectivity in, in the warehouse. Yeah. Then next question, do you want to track other assets like MHE, forklift, etc.? cetera? Um, we are already tracking them and, and that's not the objective of this, this challenge. That's a separate uh, topic, but we are tracking them this way. Good. Next question for a partially filled pallet. Would this be up high uh, on a warehouse rack? How does the team get up to count a partially filled uh, pallet right now? Uh, yes, they can be high up in the rack. Uh, right now, the team uses um, a VNA or an auto picker uh, to move to go up there and count it. Or if there are too many boxes and it was not easy, then they would bring the pallet down, count it, and put it back up there. So hence, this is done at a time when it's not uh, operational heavy. Okay, uh, last question. Is lightning level sufficient to recognize various objects? Yes, uh, we have sufficient because we need to physically count it as well. So there's, I would say there's sufficient lightning. All right, so... We still probably have another question. Uh, more questions, actually. Uh, is there already barcode on storage location, pallets, and assets, how it is being used for right now? Yeah, I think you answered this question, no? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, again, my handheld scanners, they're using it to make sure everything's put in the right spot. It's not, not related to inventory counting, but uh, we do have that and it's used by handheld scanners. Next question, we could see that you follow various HSSE uh, standards for the safety of your employees working in the warehouse. For this perspective, you see the drones applying as safety? 
So we'll have to assess that. Obviously, safety is the paramount, uh, most important thing for us. So if there is a risk, then, yeah, then that solution wouldn't pass to and we wouldn't consider it. The one that we had seen in the past that we came close to was a drone that was tethered with a, with a robot. So there was a, it was done by um, tethered to the robot on the ground. So it wasn't free fall, freely flying. It was always controlled by a robot on the ground that was moved for us. Uh, next question, how looks process with adding and subtracting products from pallets? When it happens, why it is not uh, noticed in WMS? No, it is always noticed. Uh, the cycle counter said just double check to make sure that it's done correctly because we don't want, you know, in the end, as we're dealing with half a million uh, pallet positions, there could be human errors. The cycle count is the whole idea behind this is to make sure that we catch it before it's too late uh, so that the customer doesn't get affected. This is to stop the customer from getting, you know, getting affected by it. Okay, thank you. The next question, did you try to apply computer vision? We have not applied computer vision for this particular challenge. It did not, um, solution did not come, but we have used, we have evaluated computer vision for the other aspects in a warehouse such as productivity or, or looking at safety hazards, but not for the inventory. Code. We haven't looked at that yet. And it would be somewhat challenging, I think, and maybe I'm wrong because the vision has to make sure it should be able to see all of these pilot positions. They could be anywhere. Right? We don't have so many CC or the cost of CCTV would not offset the savings of if you put multiple more CCTVs. We have CCTVs in the warehouse, but if you put in every rack, then it would probably not offset the savings you get. All right, so we, uh, this was the last question. Thank you very much, uh, Hamdan and uh, Pramod for your uh, um, efforts, for your good partnership, for this presentation, for answering all these questions. And thank you to all attendees for uh, uh, coming to us, asking your, uh, showing your interest and asking uh, your uh, question. And I hope we'll uh, hear uh, from your, uh, your side by submitting proposals to this, uh, challenge. Again, thank you very much and have a nice day.